Welcome to the Bootstrap Mogul Podcast, where we bring you the grassroots tips, tricks, and stories in everything entrepreneurship, digital marketing, and personal development. I'm your host, Andres Olguin. Today, I'm excited to share with you a fascinating lesson that I learned as an entrepreneur, one that covers not only business success, but also personal branding. We'll be exploring the power of authenticity and how it can elevate your business and your personal brand. So without further ado, let's dive in. So when I first started my entrepreneurial journey, I thought the key to success was having the best products, a killer marketing strategy, and a relentless work ethic. And while those are all essential ingredients, I discovered that there's something even more critical, authenticity. So authenticity builds trust. One thing that I quickly realized was that customers and clients crave genuine connections. And so when you're authentic in your communication and interactions, people are more likely to trust you and your brand. Trust is really that foundation of any successful business and being true to yourself and your values can help you establish that trust even more quickly. Authenticity also sets you apart. So in today's highly competitive business world, it can be really tough to stand out from the crowd. But by embracing your unique strengths, your passions, and your perspectives, you can create a personal brand that really differentiates you from your competitors. So don't be afraid to show your true colors because it's what makes you memorable and helps you to forge those deeper connections with your target audience. And authenticity fosters growth. So as an entrepreneur, you're always evolving and adapting to new challenges. And the same should apply to your personal brand. By being authentic, you're more in tune with your values and your goals, which can then help guide your decisions and shape your business's direction. So embrace change and growth, but always stay true to who you are. Now, as entrepreneurs, we must learn to harness the power of authenticity to strengthen our businesses and our personal brands. Being genuine, transparent, and true to ourselves not only helps us to stand out in a crowded marketplace, but it also is going to foster trust and also create lasting connections with our customers and our clients. So my fellow entrepreneurs, be sure to embrace your authenticity. Share your story, your passion, and your unique perspective with the world. It's these qualities that are going to set you apart and pave the way for your entrepreneurial success because there is not another version or another person, an exact copy of you in this world. So now you might be thinking, well, why should I care about personal branding? Isn't that just for influencers? Well, the answer is no. Personal branding is essential for everyone, whether you're a student, a job seeker, or even a professional looking to elevate your career, but especially for entrepreneurs, because it's all about shaping the way that people perceive you and showcase your unique skills, talents, and your personality. So why is personal branding so crucial? Well, let me give you three powerful reasons. First, Personal branding helps you to stand out in a competitive world. Like I mentioned, whether you're applying for a job, seeking clients, or simply trying to build your network, having a strong personal brand is what's going to set you apart from the crowd. Think about it. When you're competing with hundreds of other applicants for a job, how can you make sure your resume doesn't get lost in the pile? By creating a compelling personal brand, because you're not just a name on another list, you become someone worth paying attention to. Second, personal branding helps you build trust and credibility. So when people can easily identify your values, your passions, and your expertise, they are more likely to trust you and seek your advice. So establishing yourself as an authority in your field can really open doors to exciting opportunities from things like speaking engagements to partnerships and even collaborations. And it's all about creating a reputation that precedes you so that when people hear your name, they instantly associate it with excellence and expertise. 
And finally, personal branding allows you to take control of your narrative. In today's digital age, it's really easy for information to spread far and wide. So by proactively crafting your personal brand, you're going to get to decide what story you want to tell about yourself. Instead of letting others define you, you have the power to shape your own image and ensure it reflects your true values and aspirations. So now you might be wondering, well, how can I start my, you know, building my personal brand? Well, it all begins with self-reflection. So consider things like your passions, your strengths, and the unique qualities that set you apart and make you, you. Ask yourself, what do I want to be known for? What kind of impact do I want to make on the world? And once you've got a clear vision in mind, it's time to start sharing that with the world. So you want to leverage the power of social media to showcase your expertise and connect with those like-minded individuals. So here you're going to do things like creating valuable content that really resonates with your target audience and demonstrates your unique success. Now remember, and this is a big lesson that I continue to learn and continue to remind myself of, is that consistency is key. So make sure that your online presence accurately reflects your personal brand from things like your website to even your LinkedIn profile. But don't stop there though. Get involved in things like networking events, volunteer for speaking engagements, and engage with your community. Now these can be both offline and online interactions, right? Because we've seen, especially in recent years, online networking events, online summits, those sorts of things. But both offline and online are just as crucial for building your personal brand and really creating those lasting connections. So there you have it. Personal branding is not just a buzzword. It's a powerful tool that can help you stand out, build trust, and take control of your narrative. So I'm going to be sharing the four key steps that I recommend to my clients and that I use for myself when I'm building a personal brand that is going to result in sales for my business or for a side hustle. So first, identify who you serve. In order to brand yourself successfully, you need to know who it is that you serve. So in other words, who is your audience? People follow others online because they relate to them and their messaging resonates. Your audience needs to be able to feel connected to you So that in order to make that important link, you need to know as much about your audience as possible. It's really essential to know demographic information such as things like their age range, where are they located in the world, and things like socioeconomics. But even more importantly, you need to know about their values and behaviors. Because if you understand your audience's core values and tastes, you can better appeal to them to create a strong relationship. Now, Pay especially close attention to your audience's needs, to their problems, and to their questions. Look for specific issues that you can help them with. And try to find out what's troubling them the most so that you can offer really good solutions. Now, when identifying your audience, you should be as specific as possible. Even if your values and solutions appeal to a wide variety of people, you could run the risk of spreading yourself too thin. On the other hand, if you can identify a very specific target audience, you can communicate directly with them. And this will be the best use of your time and effort rather than casting your net so wide and appealing to those who only vaguely share your values. And so you'll need to create an authentic connection with your audience. So these should be really your people. Next is defining your brand identity. And this is something that A lot of people, especially those that are starting to build their brand, think about first. But I highly, highly suggest and, you know, say how critical it is that you first do that first step of identifying who you serve before jumping into this next step, which is to define your brand identity. So every brand has its own identity and language. And in order for branding to work, it has to be consistent. So everywhere your audience sees you online, they should know that it's you and your content should give give them the same impression. So if there's a break in direction, this can really cost you your audience's trust. 
you need to define these elements in order to ensure consistency wherever your audience encounters you. So the first thing is your branding statement and tagline. You should craft a simple statement and tagline that defines your personal brand. You can use this tagline as a quick summary in your marketing. And this branding statement tells people in simple language what you do and why you do it. The tagline takes this statement and pairs it down into a short sentence that people can see and at a glance they can immediately understand whether what you offer is for them or not. Now, it's going to take some time and consideration to craft a good statement and tagline, but here are some ideas to help you brainstorm. What exactly do you do in the course of your work for your customers or your audience? Or what are you interested in doing uh, for your work or you know, in your side hustle? Why do you do what you do? How do you do what you do? So try to think about your you know, how your way is unique from others. What is your, you know, special framework or what differentiates your product or service from other people's and other businesses? How do you routinely help people solve their problems? And if you haven't gotten started yet, how do you think you could help people? And so once you answer these questions, you want to summarize your statement in your tagline. And it should be unique, bold and memorable, authentic, and so simple that a child could understand what it means. Next is your design and visual identity. So you should choose specific design features and visuals that will communicate your personal brand image to your audience. Now here are some things um, and elements of brand design to include. First, your color palette. Choose a few colors that resonate with your audience and the image that you're going for. You can get ideas by looking at similar businesses in your niche, and certain industries tend to use certain color schemes. So do some research there as well. Next is font. Pick a few fonts that you'll use for headlines and text in your written materials. Make sure that the fonts work well together and that they don't clash. And usually, I suggest just two fonts maximum, one for your headings and larger text, and then the one for, you know, body text or things like if you have a blog post or an email or something, right? Um, But maximum three fonts. Next is your logo. So you want to create a logo for your brand if you don't already have one. And then you also want to have a headshot. So you really want to choose a good picture of you that you can use for your website, social media profiles, and on other branded materials. Now, these design elements will immediately let your audience know that it's you when they encounter you anywhere, online or offline. Next is your tone. So your written content should have a consistent tone and voice. Here are some things to consider um, to include in your tone. First, how formal or casual you'd like to be. The level of reading difficulty. Guidelines for slang usage. um, Whether to use certain words or not use other words, and the type of humor. Now, all of the above should match the taste of your audience, and they should also be natural to you. It's a good idea to create a style guide that sets down the guidelines for your tone and how to write. This is going to help you to clarify for yourself, but you can also use this guide if you end up outsourcing your content creation or other communication-related activities. So once you work on your brand identity, the next thing you want to do is to create content that expresses your personal brand. So content plays several important roles in your personal branding. First, it builds trust. So consistent, helpful content, it builds a relationship with your audience where they trust you to help them. It also demonstrates authority because the material that you're putting online shows that you're, you know, you have authority in your niche and it gives you a chance to showcase those skills and expertise within that niche. It also gives you the opportunity to gain that much needed exposure. So your articles, videos, social media posts, and other work helps to bring new people into your sphere and people will find you when they're looking for the information. And 
content also plays a role in generating leads. So content can be used as part of your marketing funnel to generate and qualify leads or potential customers. So you want to create the kind of content that is going to attract the audience you identified earlier. Identify common problems that you solve for your customers and then address these in your articles, blog posts, videos, social content, and more. And you want to give your audience what they're searching for. The content you create needs to be consistent with that tone and those design elements that you identified in the previous step. Now, here are some ideas on the kind of content that you can create. First, focus on times when you've gotten results for a customer or client that you've had in the past or even in a previous job or project. How did you do this? And then go and write a blog post that addresses this problem and then offer a solution that you know works. You can also create something that showcases a person you've helped. This could be something like a case study or even a testimonial, and it offers help, but it also shows that your expertise in action and it includes that personal element. You can also think of ways you can teach your audience things you know. So go beyond articles or videos and even create things like webinars that address specific problems, or you could even create a course that you teach on how to do something step by step. And this is a good way to start to earn revenue on your personal brand. Next, you want to tell your story. Create a piece that explains how you came to do what you do. A good story arc is to start with the problem that you faced and then explain how you solved that problem and then how you learned to help others. Next, you want to go for an emotional connection by making your content personal whenever possible. Be as authentic as possible and interact with your audience directly. Next, post new content regularly. Like I just mentioned, your audience is going to come to expect a weekly blog post, maybe a bi-weekly podcast, a daily Facebook post or email. Consistency is important for branding. So like I mentioned, be consistent with your publishing schedule. And also don't be so hard on yourself if you fall off the bandwagon Um, and you're not as consistent, just get back on and keep, you know, pushing forward with being consistent. And then you want to focus solely on offering value and helping people with your content without asking for anything in return. So don't always be promoting. Now there is a difference here. If you're actively promoting a product or service, or something that you have for sale, like you definitely want to be out there promoting it, but also mix in some content where you're focusing again, just on offering value and helping people without, you know, trying to make a sale. Um, And so planning and creating content, you always want to keep in mind that your personal branding goals and that your material helps you to get to these goals. All right, next is to communicate your brand message where your audience will hear it. This is critical. So where and how you publish your content should depend on two variables. First, your audience's taste, and second, your capacity to publish. Remember the thing about consistency? That second one is critical. You know, so getting to know your target market, you're going to discover what media they prefer and how often they'd like new content. You'll also need to consider your capacity to publish because you don't want to overextend your content creation uh, abilities. So first, you can do personal branding through your blog. Whatever content strategy that you decide upon, you can at least have a blog. A blog is going to allow you to publish regular articles for your audience, and it gives them a place to engage with you through the comment section. One of the major benefits of blogging is that the fresh content helps to attract new people through search engines. Next is spreading the word on social media. In today's world, social media is an essential tool for spreading your personal brand. So it's going to help you build an engaged audience on social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and you're really going to get to know your audience well. 
you'll then interact with them on a personal basis and then use that platform to let them know whenever you've published something new. Next is don't forget about multimedia. So go beyond blog posts and articles and consider publishing things like audio, video especially, and visual content. People love different types of content and it attracts a wider audience who then enjoys different types of those formats. Next, a really good idea is to expand your audience as a guest. So you want to appear in the content of other creators to expand your audience. Maybe it's writing a guest post and submitting it to other sites. Maybe it's getting interviewed by other people with personal brands. This is going to give you a chance to share expertise, but it also is going to enable you uh, to potentially reach a new audience. Next, and this is probably, I would say, lower on the priority list aside from these other ones, but publishing a book to establish your expertise. You see this a lot with a lot of thought leaders and influencers uh, where they are publishing a book to establish their expertise and, and share something about their niche. It really is a great way to establish your authority and become known for your expertise by uh, publishing a book in your niche. This not only is going to give you another avenue for publishing content, but it's also going to add to your reputation because you then become a published author. Okay, so we identified the four key steps for building your brand uh, in this episode so that you can increase sales. Uh, Now, the best way to make your personal brand work is for you to approach it in a methodical way. Decide who you want to reach and what image you'd like to present, and then create the content and post it where your audience will see it. That's everything that we just covered in a nutshell. Now, before we wrap up, I really do have an exciting opportunity for you. If you're looking to supercharge your personal brand and then unlock your full potential, I'd really like to invite you to join my exclusive income multiplier program. This program is designed for ambitious individuals who are ready to level up their personal brand and transform it into a thriving business or career. The income multiplier program offers comprehensive training modules expert guidance, and personalized mentorship to help you really navigate the world of personal branding and create a powerful strategy to multiply your income. You're also going to get access to, you know, some supportive community of like-minded individuals who are on that same journey as you uh, and really have a wealth of knowledge to draw upon. Now, as a special offer for our audience, we're giving access to this course for just $9 when you sign up using the link in the description of this episode. Spots are limited, so you don't want to miss out on this incredible opportunity to invest in yourself and your future. Now remember, a strong personal brand is the key to unlocking your income potential and achieving the success that you deserve. So why wait? You can go and click the link to join the Income Multiplier program and start building a personal brand that opens doors to endless possibilities. So thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Bootstrap Mogul podcast. I hope this story has inspired you to tap into your authenticity, leverage it both for your business and personal brand, and that you learned a lot in terms of how to build your personal brand or evolve it. Now, if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, and share it with your fellow entrepreneurs. Until next time, remember, be true to yourself and keep chasing your dreams. 